Hello friends! I am going out today to drop off some books in little free libraries because I have a whole tote bag full of ARCs and um, just books that are not in good enough shape to sell, um, like some bargain books and stuff like that, as well as a bunch of ARCs in this tote bag that have just been sitting in my closet for a while. So it's time to go distribute them. I'm going to drop these off and maybe pick some things up. It depends on what's there, of course. Um, and I thought I would take you along with me. This video is actually replacing the reader unhaul project video that I mentioned in my TBR for January because I started filming it and then I just stopped and I already got rid of the books most of them so but I thought I'd show you what I'm getting rid of before I get rid of it the combat codes by Alexander Darwin this was actually one of the books from that video that I was going to try out and see whether or not I liked and I read it I, I didn't read it I read like the first 60 ish pages of it before I decided it was not for me this is very much giving me or it was very much giving me Red Rising vibes so if you like Red Rising this might be one to pick up a very brutal militaristic sci-fi world the interesting thing about it was that like wars are no longer fought in battles because they made all of the nations came together and made like this pact to never do that again and so now they fight in like one-on-one -on -one combat type scenarios instead of all-out wars which i thought was interesting but the you know that like that militaristic sci-fi is just not for me this i read quite a few years ago now maybe two years ago or three at this point this is the black kids by christina hammonds reed really enjoyed reading this absolutely nothing wrong with it um i'm just i don't see myself rereading it it is a ya contemporary kind of heavy hitting it takes place during the los angeles riots in 1992. assassin of reality by Marina and Sergei Dyachenko. I did read the first book, Vita Nostra, and I didn't love it. It was fine for me. So I had really no interest in continuing the series. This is the second book. I got an arc of it. I don't need it. And then this one, Forged by Blood by Ihigbor Okasun, I have the Fairy Loot edition of, which is right here maybe you can see um so i don't need the arc obviously this was another one of the books that was supposed to be in that reader unhaul video sir hareward and mr fitz by garth nix i was excited for this arc because i have read from garth nix and enjoyed garth nix in the past and these are a bunch of short stories following sir hareward a knight swordsman magician and then we have mr fitz who is a puppet who is a sorcerer a sorcerer puppet um and i thought i was gonna really enjoy it i thought it was gonna be really cozy but the writing style really threw me off um at the beginning and i really didn't get too far through it before i realized it just wasn't for me i'm getting rid of the shadow and bone paperback by Lee bardugo which i'm kind of like i kind of want to keep it because these you can't find these covers anymore i have the hard covers now and all of my annotations are in the hardcovers and I just don't feel the need to keep one paperback. Um, it's kind of like the pages are a little kind of yellowing. There's like sticker residue that I never took off the book. So like it's not a great book to like sell but to put in a little free library. Then we have another arc. This is After Hours on Milagro Street by Angela M. Lopez which funnily enough I just finished reading the sequel to this and I really enjoyed it a lot more than this first book but this first book was just fine. There was a lot going on in it. There was a lot going on in the sequel too but I enjoyed it more. Just I think that the main characters I enjoyed more in their romance but this is a romance if I didn't say it and it was just fine I'm having a hard time talking because I am congested and I still have a little bit of a sore throat <clears throat> so next we have a monster calls by Patrick Ness this is the uh, beautiful illustrated edition this was a bargain copy it was you can see on the back uh, 379 or 397 bargain copy so that's why it's going in the little free library I definitely enjoyed this just not 
something I would revisit, but yeah, I don't see myself ever rereading it. Then we have The Honeys by Ryan Lasala, which was a YA horror that I read and thought was just fine. Didn't love it, didn't hate it, but we'll never reread it. And then this one is Beautiful World, Where Are You by Sally Rooney. This is a book that I was going to include once again in that video, reader unhaul video, but I looked into it some more and like I know a lot of people love Sally Rooney and maybe one day I'll try out one of her books but I looked at this I was just casually flipping through it deciding whether or not I wanted to read it there's no quotation marks there's just like barely any paragraph breaks either it's just one long line of text with nary a paragraph break and there's no quotation marks and I, I will not be putting myself through that. I'm sorry. Um, then we have Furthermore by Tahara Mafi, which I actually really enjoyed. This is kind of like this Alice in Wonderland reimagining, or it's not a retelling or a reimagining. It's just very Alice in Wonderland-esque. And it was a really fun middle grade and I definitely recommend, but I don't see myself revisiting this one or wanting to continue on with the series because I think there's another book in the series and I never got around to reading it. So this one's going in the little free library. It's not, it's okay, that's why. It is a bargain book. So anytime I have a bargain book like that, I just give it away. So these are all gonna go in little free libraries and then we'll see what we end up picking up.
originally the little free library tour was supposed to be just like its own separate video but i decided to turn this into a week-long vlog so welcome to a vlog um the footage you will have seen yesterday was of us hanging out at the park i brought my book with me i'll talk about it in a second but I didn't end up picking anything up out of Little Free Libraries. We went to like three of them, I think. There just wasn't anything interesting in them. But I did get rid of all of my arcs and that was the overall goal. So I'm starting fresh. I don't have any books hiding in my closet that I need to get rid of. Um, but I thought I would start off by sharing with you what I'm reading. Um, as of today, we have 10 days left in the month and my reading has definitely been at a slower pace so far this month. I do have some books that I want to get through before the end of the month and so now I am trying to get through them basically. But let me show you what I'm currently reading which you will have seen yesterday at the park. This is Feybound by Sarah El Arifi. I'm about halfway through it now. I'm anticipating finishing it either tonight or tomorrow. Um, but I'm buddy reading this with my friend Ashley and we are both really enjoying it. This is a really fun book so far. So in this we are following Yurin and Little. They are sisters and they are elves. And in this world we know that there were elves, fae, and humans. But as far as the elves know, the fae pretty much killed all of the humans and the fae are also gone from the land so it's only the elves left until Yurin who is a colonel in the army they are literally fighting what is called the forever war um, because it's been going on so long they're fighting amongst each other for resources basically most of the elves live in poverty and the, the war is to gain more resources but anyway she is a colonel in the army the army is all she's ever known and she disobeys orders one day which results in like 300 soldiers dying and so she gets banished from the lands of the elves and they like drop her off in the wild dangerous forest lands her sister Lettle, who is a diviner runs after her right so they're out there together in the wild when they stumble upon the fey court the fey who the elves believed did not exist anymore. They're there and they're a lot different than they were taught to believe. Okay, I got interrupted. But anyway, they find themselves at the fake court and get wrapped up in fey politics for reasons and it's really good. There's also like an animal companion aspect in here. I don't know if I should say much about that. And I'm really enjoying the characters. I'm really enjoying the world and like the descriptions of the fake court. Hold on, my dog is freaking out. Bella, am I not enough for you? My husband just left, so she's like crying at the door. Like she's not my dog, you know what I mean? Hello, Bella. Anyway. <laughs> God, I feel like I'm having so many interruptions. I'm liking it so far. I'm liking the characters, the descriptions of the Fae Court itself, really beautiful, very stunning. However, I do have some, would you calm down? I do have some complaints. The first being that the writing is very simple. I don't know why I expected the writing to just be more, to just be more, you know what I mean? Like the writing's missing that oomph, but it is very accessible, so that's, that's a good thing, I guess. The second critical thing I have to say, it's predictable in a way where the author will plant a seed and it's and something will happen and it's almost telegraphed that this is the way it's gonna happen. Do you know what I mean? Predictability is not something that is necessarily a negative for me in fantasy. I think where it really matters is when it comes to like mysteries or thrillers or horror. I want to be surprised in those genres, but I don't necessarily need to be surprised in fantasy. So that's not a deal breaker for me. But other than those two things, I'm really enjoying the story. And I'm halfway through, like I said, and I'm dying to get back into it. I only stopped reading last night because I was tired. <laughs> Like otherwise, I would have kept reading. I'm gonna continue with that today, like I said. And then after that, here's the plan. I didn't get around to reading this yet. This is The Invocations by Crystal Sutherland, one of my most anticipated releases that literally comes out on the 30th of this month. <laughs> and I had an arc since last year and haven't read it. So I wanna read it. And then 
probably next I should do this, which is part of my um, reading down my backlist project. We have The Calculating Stars, The Faded Sky, and the third book. I don't know what the third book is called, but I want to read the entire series. I was planning on doing like a series binge vlog. I might just skip that or not do that. Um, and then I really wanted to read these two in the month of January, Sword Catcher by Cassandra Clare and Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. Don't think that I'll have time to get to both of these. I, I don't think that's gonna happen with how bulky this is, but maybe this one. So that's the plan for the next couple days. I will update you once I have finished Feybound. Finished Feybound, and I have lots of thoughts about it. So let's get into it. I know that I updated you already, um, when I was like halfway through and I think I mentioned how it's like really simplistic and that stayed true throughout the whole story. I really wish that it was a bit more complex in its plotting and in its writing as well. The writing felt too simplistic for what the story was and like, not that every adult fantasy has to be super complicated and complex, but I felt like this was too much the other way, <laughs> if that makes sense. The thing I said before in my last update about, like, everything being telegraphed before it actually happens remained true. There's even, like, there's a character that gets introduced, and as soon as the character got introduced, I knew exactly who they were and what they were there for. It's the way the author wrote it made it so obvious to us as the reader who this person is and the characters just didn't figure it out. And the whole time I'm like, how is no one making this connection that is so blaringly obvious? Even, it makes it even worse because one of the main characters in here knew this person previously and still didn't recognize this person at all spent all this time with them and didn't know who they really were like it just it boggled my mind <laughs> it boggled my mind how it took so long for the characters to get anything that was so obvious to the reader and not only that but like there is a pretty major plot hole I would say once we get into the fake court there's this question that arises while you're reading as to why the Fae are behaving a certain way, why they're doing a certain thing. I'm trying to be really vague because I don't want to give anything away, but the that question is answered towards the end of the book. But involving that, there's still something that makes absolutely no sense because if this was going on for this amount of time, it shouldn't have, like, the result shouldn't be what it is. And I wish that I could properly explain it to you but it's like a complete spoiler <laughs> to explain it to you so I know that what I'm saying doesn't quite make sense but neither did it <laughs> make sense in here like the math is not mathing something is not adding up in here so that was like a big plot hole thing this needed at least like this is 330 something pages no, no, 360 something pages. This needed at least another 120, 150 more pages because there were times where certain scenes weren't as impactful because I feel like they didn't have as many words as they needed. They're just, this needed so much more words to get the point across. Um, there were times when time moved weird, which made the book feel choppy. This felt like a debut book or it just felt like it didn't have it didn't get developed enough this just needed more it needed more development it needed more words we needed at least another 120 pages and it's disappointing that that didn't happen because ultimately I loved this book like I'm talking so much crap about it I, I know I'm being very critical because I see those things and I can't not see those things, but I loved the story. I loved this world and the myth and the lore of the world. I loved seeing the Fae and the elves and the differences between them. I loved the magic in here. The elves don't have like their own specific magic except for being able to divine the future, which is not something that every elf can do, but they have, there are these magical animals 
in this world and they use the skins of these magical animals as drums and they use the drums to conduct the magic which they call drum fire which is so cool like the concept is so cool the fae have their own magic but it's with the same magical animal like they get their powers by bonding to that magical animal which is how you get the name fae bound and then once they're bound to that animal they can use their magic so we have that animal companion aspect in here as well um i loved the story so much i loved the relationships there's kind of like this enemies to lovers sapphic romance in here but there's also a second romance with Lettle. it's a for well it's not a forbidden romance but it's just it's like there's a prophecy where like one of them is going to kill the other after they fall in love so one of them's trying to stay away because they know they don't want that to happen but they can't resist the other person like great relationships great world great magic great story overall i just have a lot of issues with the way it was written and the way it was told <laughs> so it was hard to like this is four stars i gave it four stars which with all of the critical issues that i had with it probably should be lower but i just love this story so much that i couldn't give it anything lower than a four star i maybe even like a 4.5 this would be a five star all-time new favorite had i not so had so many issues with the writing itself i really enjoyed it i highly recommend i think if you are a less critical reader than i am you'll definitely enjoy this you'll be able to maybe not even notice those things and just enjoy the story i do recommend this i think it was a great introduction to a new series this is a planned trilogy i'm very excited for the next book in the series especially with the way this one ended it doesn't really end on a cliffhanger per se but it does end in a way that's like oh not quite satisfying enough for it to stand on its own if that makes sense so i do i am really anxious for the next book whenever that comes out i will read it hopefully it will be more developed than this first book was hopefully um but yeah i finished this i gave it four stars i recommend i think i'm just gonna end the vlog here my friends i don't know how long this vlog is gonna be i don't even know what i've included in this vlog I haven't started editing yet but today is thursday and i wanted to get this vlog up on friday which means we are at the end i'm in the middle of so many books right now not so many but like I just finished one last night and then I started another one the night before and then I'm also reading something else and then I'm just there's a lot happening <laughs> there's a lot happening right now but anyway I'm just gonna end it here I hope you enjoyed the vlog do talk to me down in the comments let me know your thoughts and opinions let me know if you are interested in picking up Feybound if you've already read it let me know your thoughts in the comments down below but that is gonna be it from me today if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up oh if you want to leave an emoji um, leave a fairy emoji for Feybound <laughs> and I will see you in my next video. Bye!